But something happens after noon. There's a shift in how the Yankees do, are doing things, and it has huge implications for the town of Fredericksburg. Uh, up until about noon, the Union Artillery Fire has been focused on the crossings, very specifically trying to quell, drive away those bad guys across the river, as the Yankees saw them. But after noon, the Federals can see Confederates moving through the streets. And Burnside directs the artillery to fire generally on the town, to, to mount a general bombardment of the town, and to do it in a fashion that would set the town on fire. At least two of the battery commanders, or one of the battalion commanders on the battery commander, both reference in their reports that this shift in strategy was intended to burn the town. Burn the town to prevent Confederate troops from moving through the town, back and forth between the crossings, and eventually drive them away. Uh, and so that afternoon, the, the Federals change ammunition to more explosive shells that will start fires. Uh, and they begin to fire generally on the town uh, itself. Um, the firing of cannon is going on, one soldier wrote, which in rapidity, steadiness, and loudness excels anything we have ever heard in all the battles or engagements in which we have participated or have been a witness of. And at the height of this, probably between 80 and 90 guns are firing into Fredericksburg. Uh, the Confederates, E.P. Alexander, watching from the heights up on uh, uh, Maurice Heights, uh, says that the, the shells exploded over town at the rate of one every second. Uh, so one shell exploding, excuse me, over town every second, uh, raining down shrapnel uh, and burning materials. Uh, occasionally we would see a well-directed shot pl plunge into some prominent building and we would all jump to our feet to see what effect it would have when it burst. Now, the effect of this is twofold. Number one, rather than firing at specific targets, the artillery generally fires at what they can see now, and those are the spires of the churches. Uh, and so most of the damage from the Union Artillery Department, the most concentrated damage, is on Caroline Street between the Baptist Church and St. George's. In fact, Caroline Street on this side of Caroline Street, which is the second street into town, as many of you know, uh, virtually the entire block from the Baptist Church to the left is virtually destroyed on this side. In fact, I think there's only two wartime buildings that survive. And the next block down, the 1000 block, suffers a similar le level of destruction. And that is solely because those were kind of the targets. Those, the, the steeples were the brackets uh, that the artillerymen fired at because they could see nothing else. There was smoke, there was mist, uh, and so the town caught on fire, just as the Yankees hoped. But, but, it didn't have the effect that they envisioned because the day was absolutely still. Any number of soldiers who wrote about watching the scene, wrote about how the smoke from the fires just went straight up. Straight, straight, straight up. There was no wind to spread the flames. And so only though, generally speaking, only those buildings that were struck were ignited. Uh, so there was no spreading of the flames through town. If it had been a windy day on December 11th, 1862, Fredericksburg would have suffered much larger scale destruction than it did. As it is, although there's a wide scale perception that Fredericksburg was destroyed on December 11th, it was not. Uh, uh, about 65 buildings uh, were either burned or damaged so badly that they eventually had to be taken down as a result of this bombardment. There were a number of buildings that were damaged or burned because of Confederate firing into town on the subsequent two days. In fact, some of the most famous photographs of damaged buildings in Fredericksburg are buildings that were almost certainly damaged by Confederate artillery fire coming into town. By now, the town was simply part of a battle. Um, now, so was, of course, the bombardment of Fredericksburg uh, would become very controversial later on after the battle. Was it appropriate? It enraged Southerners 
course, Southern civilians, many of them, when Burnside arrived, had fled, and then when Burnside didn't cross, what did they do? They came back. So there were probably, I would guess, between 800 and 1,000 civilians in town when the firing started on December 11th. And they could be seen leaving. Jane Beale, the famous diarist in Fredericksburg, huddled in her basement all that day and then left in a dramatic form under the bombardment later in the, the afternoon. Uh, that scene enraged Southerners. Uh, but was the bombardment of Fredericksburg some sort of barbaric violation of the rules of war at the time? Was it the most extreme at the time? Oh, yes, yeah. without question. The most extreme example. I mean, Petersburg would suffer probably more severely than Fredericksburg did, but over a much longer period of time at the end of the war. And was it the first time they actually aimed at churches? Well, they, it was the first bombardment of an American town by an American army, is for sure. <laughs> but, you know, so is, is, are these the acts of bad men, or is this a proper act of war? You said they had an agreement beforehand that the Confederates didn't use it militarily. That was right. right, so, so the, the Confederates yeah. used it militarily. Yeah. I think that's the main point. Once it's lost it, it's pretty easy. And you know who knew that? You know who knew that? Robert E. Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Lee understood that as soon as he used the town for military purposes, the town would become a battlefield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so according to the rules of war, uh, Without question, the bombardment was justified. Even the general bombardment, which in fact offended the sensibilities of some Union officers. In fact, Henry Hunt, the Union chief of artillery, resisted those orders. Uh, but even those orders to burn the town, uh, or to set the town on fire by bombardment for military purposes, seemed to be justified. Uh, at the time. Now that doesn't mean the Southern, Southerners didn't get really mad about it. And very importantly, very importantly, uh, it was the bombardment of the town and the wide-scale destruction caused by Union artillery that gave license to Union troops when they passed into town later that day. And the next day and the next day, they saw the destruction begun by the Union artillery and felt, well, we're just kind of finishing the job. And so they went into the houses, and that set the stage for one of the most unusual and ugliest episodes in the history of the Army of the Potomac, and that is the looting of Fredericksburg.